In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful and delicious broccoli and cauliflower gratin. This gratin recipe uses a simple bechamel sauce to which we'll add Gruyere and Comté cheeses. Use that to cover the veggies and then top with more cheese and buttered breadcrumbs. The full step-by-step -step recipe, ingredients, and equipment list are below. Let's start with the stars of the show, the veggies. When I'm in the grocery aisle, I pick the cauliflower first as it comes in full heads. So I make sure there are no brown spots and choose one full head of cauliflower and then I guesstimate an equal amount of loose broccoli to match. Now they don't have to be exact and this recipe will work just as well if you only have one or the other. Cheese. I'm using about a half pound each of Gruyere and Comte. If you haven't noticed, cheese is very expensive these days. This is over $20 worth of cheese. So if it hurts your brain and or your pocketbook to spend $20 on cheese for $5 of broccoli and cauliflower, then you can use just good old cheddar and everything will be fine. Now let's make the gratin. There are several steps involved, so mise en place, getting everything ready before you start, is very important for this dish. Steps. First, set your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Take a tablespoon of butter, butter your baking dish well, and set it aside for later. Take another tablespoon of butter and cover it with one quarter cup of breadcrumbs. Microwave for 20 seconds, mix well, and reserve for later. Now grate your cheeses and loosely combine them. This rotary grater powers right through. If you don't have one, use a box grater and watch out for your knuckles. Reserve one cup of the cheese to add to the top of the gratin. The rest of the shredded cheese will go into the sauce. Now rinse your broccoli in cauliflower and with a knife, begin to remove the florets. Go for fairly large florets, as they look really nice in the final dish and also hold lots of sauce. Once you've removed the stalk of the cauliflower, the rest can often be broken apart by hand. Broccoli and cauliflower stems and stalks can be discarded now, or you can hang on to them and pretend you're going to use them for something else later and throw them away in a few days. Now we're going to par cook our broccoli and cauliflower. Fill a large pot or Dutch oven one third or so full of water and bring it to a boil. When the water is hot, add a teaspoon of salt. Don't add the salt to cold water as it can cause pitting in your nice pots and pans. While the water is heating, take one final look around and make sure you have all of your equipment and ingredients laid out and ready to go. To par cook the broccoli and cauliflower, add them to the salted boiling water. Cover the pot and when the water returns to a boil, cook for five to six minutes. This will par cook the veggies, soften them just a little, but will not turn them to mush don't overcook them. When the par cooking is complete, carefully drain the broccoli and cauliflower through a colander. I turn the stove burner off and set the colander back inside the cooking pot. Allow these veggies to sit and release some steam. This will help prevent the gratin from becoming too wet later in the oven. Now for the sauce. In a saucepan, over medium-low heat, melt three tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted and is crackling and bubbling, add three tablespoons of flour and stir, stir, stir with a whisk. For this, I use a coated whisk just to avoid putting too many scratches on my fancy cookware. Add a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. Stir and cook this roux for about two minutes total. We want to get rid of any raw flour taste. It will bubble and be a light golden brown due to the butter and pepper, but don't let it turn dark or burn. Next, while whisking like a madman, add the cold milk. 
a little, then a lot, and whisk, whisk, whisk. Getting a text message, phone ringing, ignore it. Keep whisking. There should be no lumpiness. Now you can turn up the heat just a little, no higher than medium, maybe a skosh under, and continue to whisk and stir this mixture until it comes to a simmer or very light boil. Once simmering, cook it for another two minutes or so. It should be significantly thicker now. Now turn off the burner and add the cheese, one third at a time, whisking like there's no tomorrow until all is incorporated and smooth. Add a half teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, stir, and then taste. Adjust for salt here. If you've used unsalted butter, you're probably gonna to want to add a little bit more. I usually add another half teaspoon. Add salt and one quarter teaspoon increments and taste each time, just so you don't run the risk of over salting. And technically, by adding the cheese, we've leveled up our bechamel to a Mornay. Next, grab your buttered baking dish and add the steamed veggies. Try to turn the florets right side up as they'll taste better if you make a nicer presentation. Now ladle the sauce onto the veggies. Make sure each piece gets a good coating. Take the cup of reserved cheese and the buttered breadcrumbs and sprinkle all around the top. And here it's always nice to take a moment to reflect on your hard work and yet another confirmation of your awesomeness. Then place the dish in the center of a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. Set a timer for 30 minutes. So mine usually take about 40 to 45 minutes total, but all ovens are a little bit different. So after a half hour, keep an eye on it and remove it when the top is browned to your liking. And I like mine like this. Ah, is there anything better than bubbling cheese? Then we need to let it rest for a few minutes, which is actually very easy to do because you know you're going to take pictures of it and send them to all your friends. This broccoli and cauliflower gratin is a picture perfect, delicious side dish. Give it a try and let me know how you like it. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the old channel and look somewhere on the screen for links to other videos you will enjoy. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.